your script. So in three, two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, July 11th, 2022. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast to Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Fayer, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Ms. Jones? Present. Mr. McMillan? Present. McMillian? Present. Ms. Han? Mr. Kuhn? Mr. Offerman? Present. Are there any additional board members present that were not called? Thank you, Ms. Fea. Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Pedro Augusto? Present. Ms. Shira Anderson? Dr. Mary Boswell McComas? Present. Ms. Mildred Charlie Green? Dr. Mark Michael Zarchin? Mr. Chris Hartloff? Present. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie? Ms. Anna Rung Farsan Groom? Present. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes? Mr. James Korn? Present. Mr. Pete Dixit? Present. Dr. Douglas Elmendorf? Ms. Kimberly Ferguson? Present. Ms. April Lewis? Present. Ms. Megan Shea? Present. Dr. Melissa Wistead? Mr. Merrill Plate? Present. Ms. Michelle Sansbury? Present. Ms. Melanie Webster? Present. Mr. Kenneth West? Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Patricia Mustafer? Jennifer Kraft? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fayo. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, Mr. Hartlow, please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract. Sure, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Hartlow. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Baltimore County Public Schools. The first item on the agenda is um, item CWA, dash 118 dash 22 elementary Eng English language arts curriculum. This is a new contract for elementary English language arts curriculum for the Office of Language Arts. Approval is requested for a one year contract with two five year extension periods with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $550,000. At the conclusion of the pilot, this contract will return to the board to extend the, the term and request additional funding. Uh, for full adoption. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Um, Dr. McCosa, Ms. Shea, I do have a question. This is the pilot that the board requested. Um, could you clarify if the pilot will be extended in the existing schools that have it, or is it going to be just certain grade levels? Uh, thank you, Ms. Jost. It, it is in the existing schools and we will be expanding to a few schools. I'll turn it over to Ms. Shea uh, for more details for everyone. 
Thank you, Dr. McComas. Good afternoon, Chair, um, and good afternoon, board members. Um, yes, as Dr. McComas stated, the 22 schools that participated in the spring pilot are all continuing the pilot. Um, 18 of the, actually 19 of the 22 schools also requested that we expand to include all grade levels at their school. Um, they were in uh, such strong support that they asked if they could have it K to five, whereas in the spring pilot, in some instances, schools piloted only certain grade levels. Um, we did also add Rossville Elementary, our newest elementary school opening this August. Um, and then at the request of the principal and with support from the Department of Schools also included Hernwood Elementary School in the expansion of the pilot. Um, and then we are also going to be partnering with staff in the Office of Special Education. Uh, we have some uh, regional programs using an integrated model in which um, we will be piloting the use of these materials in those classrooms as well. Um, how long is this pilot for just uh, this academic year? So the contract request is for this coming year, but I believe we will bring back um, at Dr. McComas and Dr. Williams um, urging information uh, early and often. <laughs> OK, thank you, Ms. Shea. And, and there are some other concerning background information that we could bring up um, since it's not related to the contract tomorrow uh, regarding the letter from the superintendent and the county executive, which I would like to discuss with the full board. But I have no further questions. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none. I, we will Joe's, I put in the chat. Oh, well, go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, just a quick follow up to some good news that Ms. Shea shared um, and you answered my question, Ms. Shea, so thank you, part of it. Um, and that had to do with the integrated model um, from the Office of Special Ed. And my question is for staff who request access for adapting the curriculum for use in an integrated classroom, can they request access um, to use for use in that model if they're not included in your plans? Is that something that they can request access? So um, any teacher who has access to my view has the ability to modify the materials. So the materials that come to us, the digital access are editable um, for the purpose of differentiation. I believe the Office of Special Education includes um, all of these classrooms that I'm describing, the integrated model classrooms. They're not uh, cherry picking individual teachers, but rather opening that ability to all integrated classrooms. So I think that answers your question. So any teacher in that model of that program would have access based on the pilot expansion and then could modify it. Um, I just wanna be clear that if you are a special educator and you are not a part of either pilot school or this integrated classroom, you would not have access to the material because that's a part of what we're contracting for. Does that help? It does. So if you're a special educator not in a pilot school, you would not have access to the curriculum. Is that, that correct? Is correct? Unless you are. So some of these, I know this is a little bit confusing. Some of these regional programs exist mm -hmm. in schools that are not pilot schools. So you would either have to be a special educator in a pilot school in which the whole school had access, or you would have to be a special educator in one of these regional programs. OK. That answers it. Thank you. Yes, and Miss Kraft um, is nodding, so I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Shea. Um, and so had the board approved the original contract, which was system wide, everybody would have access to this program, correct? Yes, that is correct. All right. Thank you. Uh, sure. If there are no more questions, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. OK, um, ASI-826-22 vocabulary.com. This is a new contract for vocabulary.com for the Office of English Language Arts pre-K through 12. Approval is requested for a five year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $565,500. And this was presented um, at the curriculum, the most recent curriculum committee. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, um, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. 
ASI-821-22 Secondary Mathematics Tutoring. This is a new competitively bid contract for secondary mathematics tutoring services for the Department of Academic Services Homeless Programs. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with 10 recommended bidders and a contract spending authority of $1 million. Uh, this also went forward to the uh, curriculum committee. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. ASI-825-22 Conscious Discipline. This is a new contract for professional development and instructional materials to continue to expand social, social emotional learning, SEL, to all elementary grade levels for the Office of Student Support Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $887,337. And that uh, also went forward to the curriculum committee. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with presenting the next contract. LKO-417-18 Active Assailant Training. Uh, this is a contract modification. Approval is requested to extend the contract for three years. Um, I'm sorry, for three months with a with one awarded contractor approved by the board on Tuesday, April 3rd, 2018. So there's no cost on this, no additional cost on this, just a three month extension. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. CWA-113-22 Alternative Student Slash Customer Transportation. This is a new cooperative contract to provide alternative student slash customer transportation for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a five month contract with two one-year options to extend with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $3 million. Any members, any questions? Um, I do have one quick question. You said it's a five-month contract for transportation, uh, alternative transportation? Correct. How does that cover a whole academic school year? Is that just supplementing our transportation already available? Well, uh, what I'm reading here is that it ex it ends on 1231 2022, but we do have the option to um, 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 renew. I, I see Ms. Uh, Webster's uh, popped up, so I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Melanie. Since this is a cooperative contract, we are using the term that is set by the originating agency. So we cannot extend our contract until they have extended theirs. So should they choose not to extend their contract, what happens to the students in January? We would have to issue a new solicitation or perhaps find an alternate contract to piggyback. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. LLY-406-22 Workforce Management Systems and Related Products and Solutions. This contract modification will provide for the continued use of timekeeping software for the Division of Fiscal Services. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $377,700, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $3,277,900 with one awarded uh, contractor approved by the board on Tuesday, November 9th, 2011. Um, this is the, the Kronos um, um, timekeeping system that we are in the process of implementing. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Ms. Hart Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. LKO-403-18 learning management software system. 
This contract modification will provide for the continued use of a learning management system for the Division of Information Technology. Approval is requested to extend the contract for five years and five months and increase contract spending authority by $3,390,550, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $6,428,170 with one awarded contractor approved by the board on January 9th, 2018. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Hen, do you have any questions or is that from your previous chat? That was from previously. All right. Thank you. Um, hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. And and I can go or Pete, if you uh, I see you popped up, if you want to take this one. That's OK. I'll take care of that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So good evening. My name is Pete Dixit. I'm executive director for facilities management and strategic planning. Uh, the next contract is JBO 706-22. Uh, it's a, a consent to assignment and it's the name change from uh, Office Depot LLC to ODP Business Solution. There are no additional funds needed. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. The next contract is JNI 758 16 for emergency generator systems. Again, it is a consent to assignment uh, from Curtis Engine and Equipment Company Incorporated to Curtis Power Solutions. Uh, there is no change in amount or term of the contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. The next contract is GDA-325-22 is for corrugated card boxes. These boxes are needed for uh, packing books, uh, archiving files, or relocation of schools and offices material. The term is five-year contract, and the amount is 350000 Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixon, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Uh, the next contract is CWA-125-22 is for installation of ceiling tiles and associated material uh, for different schools in the systems, schools and offices. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the recommended bidder and spending authority of $300,000. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. So next two contracts are for Northeast Area Middle School. Uh, the first one is for package 2B for landscaping. Uh, there were three bids received. Uh, the contract amount is $329,890,000, including contingency and other packages have already been approved by the board and the project is approved by the board as part of the capital improvement program. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is for the same school. It's the package 9B for flooring. It's in the amount of 300 and uh, $3,455,100, including contingencies. And there is one bidder uh, uh, for this package. So the approval is requested. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. So the next item is not a contract. ARA-200-23 is a deed of easement 
and I'll just quickly provide a little bit of background for the board. Uh, Seven Oaks Senior Center uh, has a parking lot with 57 spaces. This has proven insufficient to them, and they are right adjacent to Seven Oaks Elementary School. So county has requested uh, use of our land to provide additional parking spaces. Uh, the current number of spaces 57. The new number of spaces will be 98 for them. Most of this expansion will be on the Baltimore County Public Schools property. And the project is handled by Baltimore County. This request for deed of easement have uh, two components to it. The first is to provide a temporary construction easement, which will expire once the construction is completed. The second is a permanent easement to Baltimore County to maintain the expanded parking lot on our property. The county will also construct a sidewalk from parking lot to the existing bus loop so that school can use and access the parking lot during major school events. So board's approval is requested for this deed of easement. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the final item is JME 523-21 for overly partial roof replacement. This is a consent to assignment from Simpson of Maryland to Simpson Unlimited Incorporated. There are no change in amount or term of the contract. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, committee members, any questions? Um, I have a quick question, Mr. Dixit. I know sure. this is just a change in terms of the terms, so the contract was already approved. Why are we doing a partial roof replacement and not a full? So the other parts were replaced before, and uh, in a lot of cases what happens that if uh, the roof is less than 15 years old, we save it until we get uh, state eligibility and state share for that replacement. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 16 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Is there a second? I'll second it, McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Fayer, please call the roll. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jost? Yes. That's four. Thank you, Ms. Fayer. There being four in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts 1 through 16 will be moved forward to the full board. The last item of the agenda is announcements. The next Building and Contracts Committee will be held on Monday, August 8, 2022 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you and good evening. Thank you.